You gotta pull it, you gotta swoop it, make sure to fold it and tug. It takes careful attention to get your bow tie nice and snug. So styling, unique, and oh so fly. But am I talking about you or am I talking about a bow tie? Cause just like a bow tie, you two are some handiwork. Made for a purpose with all of your quirks So loved and adored in his eyes And we're so glad you're joining us for Timmy Bowties Well, welcome to Timmy Bowties. We are with a celebrity guest, a really special person that we're excited to bring on the show, the Cardinals manager, Mike Schill. Mike. Jimmy Bowties, good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, Privileged too. Privileged to be here with hey, you. Well, we're so grateful. We're looking forward to this opportunity for you to join the show, uh, offer some encouragement to our viewers, and I know it'll be a huge blessing to them to have you on. So we're talking a little bit about dreaming big. That's been the theme of our summer. And we really want to encourage the kids to dream about who they can impact along the way, the people that they can love, we just had a competition where kids got to do something amazing for someone amazing. So writing cards to people, offering to do your brother's laundry, things that we don't naturally think about doing, but really shows a lot to people when you go out of your way to love them. So we're talking about dreaming big, and I wanted you to be on the show because you have what many people would consider to be a dream job. Uh, but I think for you, uh, you have a job that offers you the opportunity to reach a lot of other people. And you have a heart for kids. So just talk about um, what this job means to you and what dreaming big looks like in your life. Uh, well, first of all, it's a privilege to be on here. It's quite a blessing um, and grateful to share some thoughts with everybody. Um, you know, I do encourage, the, I love the dream big concept. Um, I believe God gives in abundance. Um, and if you open your heart and your to, and your mind to the possibilities, um, it's amazing what you can actually accomplish. I uh, never expected to be the manager of the St. Louis Cardinals. It was something that you know you're talking about serving others. You know, I'm a, by by definition, I'm the manager of the team. But um, at heart, I'm really a coach, and I always feel like a coach is a is a teacher. And you know, I got into this profession really to be able to serve others. And to be able to help players that I was um, bestowed the opportunity to, to help and to coach and in some cases mentor, um, I really felt like it was my obligation to pour into them to make them the best version of, of them they could possibly be and get the most out of their God-given abilities. And so my dream was to help others dream and to serve others and allow them to, to grow and, and get what, again, they can out of their passions and desires. And I'll talk about passion probably later, but um, the interesting way things work sometimes is when you when you do have a, a, a servant heart, a giving heart, a love for others first, what's happened in my case, and, and, and I can witness in others, is I looked up and with no real, I always wanted to do well for myself. You know, you put time in your effort, you're competitive, you want to do well and you want to get rewards for it. But I never I always cared more about the players than I cared about my own career. And subsequently, after 20 something years of doing it, I look up and I'm the manager of the St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> and so um, I do really sincerely believe that what you give, you will get back. But ultimately, you give out of the heart of giving without any expectation of receiving anything back. And that, that does bring in a joy in and of itself. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, just getting to know you, I've been inspired by the heart that you have and your desire to see outside of yourself in such a busy profession. I mean, you agreed to take the time to do this. So it goes a long way and people really recognize that. And uh, we just need more of that in this world, taking time to see other people, to hear their story and to really look them in the eye and let them know that they're, they're important. Yeah, the biggest thing you can give somebody, the most precious gift you can give somebody is your time. Yeah. If somebody's going to invest their time in you, um, then you should know that they really care about you. If they're not looking for anything other than to help you 
um, and, and to help grow you. Um, and they're giving your time because it's one thing, you know, we can make more money, we can have other opportunities, but you, you can only have so much time and what, and being able to give what is um, ultimately limited on, on our earthly lives is um, really the most precious gift. And the one thing about it, when people do give you their time and when you have a, a, a caring person in your life, I also appreciate those persons going to tell you things that you need to know that you may not want to hear. Yeah, that's a really hard thing to do, yeah. whether it be a parent or a mentor, close friend, um, and just accept it for what it is. You know, they're not trying. There are critics in the world. There are, is a lot of hate in the world. Um, you know, we deal with that in our industry fairly um, more so than we'd like or I would like some <laughs> days, um, including today. Um, but uh, the fact of the matter is, is um, the people that, that are going to share truth with you, and they're going to give you an opportunity and work with you and helping you get to the next step, help you understand that how to navigate life, which can be a real challenge, yeah. um, as we know. But them giving you the time and them giving you the love and those days of the tough love is really a special gift that that um, that my hope and prayer for people listening, young people listening, is that you're willing to receive it. Right. Yeah, that's the important thing. Having people in your corner that are are willing to you know encourage you when you need it but also challenge you when uh they find that you're going through difficult times uh in your life well you've had it easy so far uh but i'm gonna put you on the hot seat okay. because we have a few questions from our fans and uh you thought the media was bad but <laughs> just, just wait all right let's go so the first question we have is when are you going to sign to me bow ties to be your first baseman Oh, well, Timmy Bowtie's our first baseman. Um, as you know, when we talk about truth, um, you know, sometimes <laughs> the truth can hurt a little bit, Timmy Bowtie. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of roles we'd sign you as. Um, you know, there's very, very, Shortstop. very, yeah, um, not quite there yet. <laughs> um, I, I view you more as an inspirational, maybe team chaplain, um, okay. emotional, spiritual leader as opposed to necessarily doing the, the physical work on athletic the athletic abilities. Yeah. 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 That's probably wise. I peaked in high school. I can take it. I yeah. can take it. Cause I know you care about me. I, do. I don't know how that one got in there. Okay. I'm not kids sure. nowadays. Yeah. Kids. Okay. Kids. Uh, this next question is from our friend Cecilia and her brother James is on deck. Cecilia turning it over to you. Hi. My name is C Cecilia, and I wanted to know how they decided on the name of the Cardinals. Go Cardinals! Well, I don't know the great answer to that. <laughs> um, Cecilia, I think we should do some uh, um, Googling. Um, my understanding of the – the Cardinals used to be the Perfectos, and the team started in 1892. So it's a, it's a rich history of the Cardinal organization going back into that century. Um, and I'm not sure how it exactly transferred over to the Cardinals, but it's um, there's a great um, understanding of how we came about, and I won't do a service of trying to explain it. Um, but look up how the Cardinals logo came about, because I think that's a pretty good story um, about people being in the community and the team listening, and then how the birds on the back came to came to life. Yeah. Cecilia, you stumped him. You say a good question. First question. Yeah, it's a good. <laughs> Solid job. All right, we're going to turn it over to her brother, James. Hi, my name is James, and I was wondering who was or is the best player on the Cardinals team in history. Go Cardinals! James, that's a, that's a great question and a tough one to answer. I have some thoughts. Um, greatest Cardinal in history by statistics is probably Stan Musial, yeah. Stan the man, um, who had an equal number of base hits at home as he did on the road and was only within two of the number of RBIs in the career and number of runs scored he had. He's a very steady player, played in, I believe, 22 or 24 All-Star games, which is a team record. Mm -hmm. um, but Stan Musial's, yeah, which is a hard, you know, you have Bob Gibson, maybe the best pitcher in Cardinals history. Um, but, you know, you're talking about a lot, a lot of great players. Currently on our team, it's really hard to say. I do feel like we've got a um, future Hall of Famer in Yadier Molina as our catcher. 
so it's hard not to put him towards the top of that list. Um, but Adam Wainwright's going to be a Cardinal Hall of Famer one day for sure. Without some injuries a couple years, likely a, a, a Hall of Famer in Cooperstown. Nolan Arenado's heading to Cooperstown and having a Hall of Fame career. He's new to the organization, a great job for us this year. Paul Goldschmidt's an amazing player and has done really great things to help us be in the playoffs the last few years. Um, so it's really hard to say, but all those guys deserve consideration. Great question. Yeah, way to go, James. All right, we're going to turn it over to our friend Carter. Hey, Mike, it's me, Carter. How did you become the Cardinals manager? Carter, man, what, I love your enthusiasm. Great question, my man. Um, I'm not, God allowed this opportunity for me. I can confidently tell you, I had not had it on my radar. I started the, with the organization in 2004 before you were born. <laughs> so I'm going on my 18th season. And I did a lot of different things to help the organization. That's probably where I'd, I'd say I, I just wanted to create value for the organizations. I was in the scouting department and the player development department. We have a minor league system that, that grooms and works with our players that gets them ready for the, for the St. Louis team up here and the big club. And I was a coach and manager in the organization for many years. And we have different levels. So you start in rookie ball and you work your way up. Um, and I just got an opportunity to manage in rookie ball and then uh, had successful teams. And then we went to, I went to double A and we had more successful teams. We won a couple championships at each places and, and then uh, went to our triple A team in Memphis. And then I got to be on the staff here in St. Louis and, and kind of get understanding how the big leagues work. And uh, at no point in my journey that I really expect to be the manager of the Cardinals, there were moments where I said, you know what, I think I could do that. Um, but that wasn't my goal necessarily. I just wanted to be a good employee. I want to create value for the organization and the players. Um, and then an opportunity presented itself in 2018 to, to manage the team. And, um, you know, it was a blessing and still is. And, and uh, so, so here I am. What a ride it's been. What a ride. Yeah. Carter, great question. Now it's time for Garrett. In your experience, what is the most important attribute of a baseball player? Garrett, that's a tremendously well thought out question. What's the best attribute of a baseball player? Um, it requires a lot of attributes. I would say the number one attribute is persistence. It's a really, really challenging game for a lot of reasons. It's a game that's played every day. It's a game that requires mental, physical, and emotional toughness. Um, and some days it goes really well for you, but there's a lot of circumstances. The team on the other side is trying their best to. Um, it's a hard thing to do uh, to play this game, even though sometimes the way we play it makes, it makes the game look easy, but it's just not. Um, so really just, and it's really similar to life. It's a great attribute to life is, is persistence. And, you know, it's a game. People say baseball is a game of failure. Life obviously is going to have some setbacks. And, um, but I don't, I don't really see um, life or anything we do as a, as a failure. I see it more as a temporary setback. Um, and I think it's a healthy mindset to have. You're going to have things that don't go your way. But in order to be really um, the best version of yourself in this game, you're going to need to be able to pick yourself up, um, throw your shoulders back, keep your head up, and, and keep playing, and keep trying to be the best version of yourself. If you do that, then you're getting, you're getting the most out of your God-given ability. So I'd say out of all the attributes, persistence is probably the number one. And that's great advice for Garrett. He is a high school baseball player, and he's uh, rising up to the ranks. Well, good luck. Congratulations, and continue to believe in yourself and work hard. Yeah, no doubt. Okay, it's time for Eliana and her brother Lincoln. What's your favorite part of your job, Coach? <laughs> Go Eliana and Lincoln, good job. Favorite part of my job, a lot of, a lot of great things that um, I, I'm grateful for for this job. Um, the best part of my job is the relationships I get to create with the staff and the players um, and, and the ability to work together on a, on a common goal. And then you realizing that you get through with a game and you win a game, the, the satisfaction of a group doing that together is, is, uh, is very meaningful. Good question. Okay, a few more. Hits keep on coming. Next, we have Nick. Can I come to Bush and win the bases? Uh, Nick. 
<laughs> Nick, I, I, wow. Um, the answer to the question is one day. Uh, unfortunately, not two day. Um, only because of you know the, the COVID world. Um, we have, just so you feel better a little bit, Nick, I, I can't have my own uh, daughters come and run the bases. We did have a family day and that was an exception. Um, but uh, hopefully as we um, make strides in this fight against COVID and, and things start to you know, continue to be encouraging and, and we get more consistency about what's taking place, we're, we're able to have you out here and run the bases and hopefully you're really fast and make good turns. Yeah, no doubt. I think he is. I like his chances. All right, great. Yeah, from what I remember, in a typical season, they offer the opportunity for kids to run the bases about six or seven times. So the opportunity is coming, just not right now. Stay patient. Hang tight, Nick. Okay, next is his brother, Eddie. Um, if you put yourself or Fred Bird in a game, what position would you play? All right. So good question, Eddie. If I put, first of all, probably is my job as a man is to make good decisions. <laughs> um, and I probably wouldn't put myself in the game, although there's days where I um, would like to go out and play. But it get further and further in between as I get a little older. Um, but if I was to put myself in the game, I'd put myself at shortstop. Um, and Fred Bird, I'd be more inclined to put Fred Bird in the game um, over myself. Not <laughs> Are you a high, sure? Not a, well, yeah, I am. You can't even see his feet. Not a high bar. Uh, <laughs> but um, I'd put Fred Bird in the outfield because I gotta assume that he can he can fly around and catch the catch the pop ups, and if a ball's leaving the ballpark, he can fly up and catch it before it go. leaves the leaves the stadium. Rob a home run. Yeah. Well, you mentioned getting older, and I, I do want to make sure we recognize the fact that uh, you just had a birthday. So happy belated birthday to you. Thank we you. won't say the number. No, the number's fine. <laughs> it's fine, but I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I appreciate you, Mike. That's a wrap on our kids' questions. Thank you so much again just for being here and for inspiring kids. Uh, far beyond the ones that will watch this show, I've seen you in action. It's real. Even when the cameras are off, you truly have a genuine heart for people. And uh, it really inspires me and I know so many others. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Just want to say the last couple of things to the group is, um, you know, chase your passions. Um, my dad gave me great advice when I was younger. He said, you know, find something you really love to do um, and become really good at it. And you'll always have a, have a job. And I don't view what I have some days a little bit more of a job than others. But I, I, I'm blessed to enjoy what I do, so I don't consider it work. Um, but what I really encourage you to do is, is trust yourself, trust your passions, follow your dreams, and don't be afraid to dream big. You are going to have people that are going to try to tell you you can't do something. Um, and you're going to have people that are going to try to bring you down so they can try to bring themselves up. And that can be discouraging. I'm just going to encourage you to surround yourself with encouraging people. Again, people that are going to love you. People are going to give you um, good advice, tough love occasionally because they care about you. Um, but follow your passions. Don't let people tell you no. And just know this, um, you're never alone. You're never alone. You got yourself. You can talk to you positive with yourself. But ultimately, if you really have any issues with life and you feel like you're alone, just pray. Just pray because God's always with you. God will give you peace. God will give you courage. God will give you strength. I, I know he's done that for me. I'm a big believer in, in our Lord. And um, I know when things are tough for me because they do get hard for everybody, including me. And, um, you know, I just have support with, with my family and, and close friends, but sometimes I just get really quiet and I just um, surrender my, my uh, issues to the Lord and, and um, he's always there for me. So no, you're never alone, as no matter how hard things are. And, and I know things are hard some days, and, and, um, but believe in yourself, trust the Lord, and, and uh, just know that everything's gonna be fine. And, and if you do have something that's really bothering you, share it with somebody, don't try to hold it in. Um, but uh, just love yourself and follow your dreams. Awesome, Mike. I can't say it better than that. Give it up for Mike Schilt. Thanks so much for tuning in. And Mike, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Thanks, Tim. Over and out. We're so glad you joined us for Timmy Bowtie.